Good evening. I think that surprised us all. I apologize. I want to thank you for joining us this evening for Parkway Online Safety Night. Um, we've got um, a lot of things going for you, a lot of resources that are going to be made available to you before we get started. I'd like to thank a couple of people um, that are here with us uh, that have either, either supported the planning of this event or are going to be helping out tonight. Uh, Mr. Steve Van Mater, Director of Technologies at the back of the room. Thank you for being here. Mr. Tom Swoboda, Instructional Technology Coordinator. Mr. Michael Berlack, the dis And Ms. Julie Harrison, Coordinator of Counseling for the District, is here with us this evening. Thank you. And a little bit later at the Technology Resource Fair down in the gym, you're going to meet a lot of our District Computer Resource Specialists and Technology Integration Specialists. Spe that's a hard one. Specialists um, who actually are in all of our schools working with your kids and their teachers every day. Um, they know their stuff, and they're here to support us this evening, and you'll be able to meet them a little bit later. Um, this evening here, we're going to about 8 o'clock, we'll have our keynotes. Ms. Cindy Schrader, Executive Director of iKnowBetter.org, will be talking about if our kids are who they mean to be online. And then Mr. Brian Mize will be following with, uh, uh, I'm sorry, he's a Special Officer with the FBI St. Louis Cyber Squad, and he's going to be talking about protecting our kids online. And then from 8 to 9, we'll have the demonstrations. And during that time, down in that same end of the building, we're going to have our Facebook sessions, Facebook 101, um, and we're going to run a couple of sessions. Um, we have two classrooms available for each session, 8 to 8.30 and 8.30 to 9 o'clock. Um, and we'll have that on a first-come, first-served basis, and we will announce that in the gym before those sessions begin. Um, and I'm good. Um, our uh, CRS here at Northeast found this sign in a, in a shop when she was out and about recently. And humorous as it is, unattended children will be given espresso and a free puppy. Um, I say this as a joke, but I, I do hope that um, we experience this night together, parents and students uh, together. There are all kinds of tools and great safety settings on Facebook, but absolutely nothing will ever replace an open line of communication between you, the parent, and you, your child. Nothing's ever going to replace that. And so some amazing resources and some handy tips that are going to help you out. It will also be a great way to start that conversation with your children now um, so that when, when problems may arise or there may be, may be a tough social situation that pops up on Facebook, you've already had that conversation or you know to, where to go with that conversation. So with that, I would like to introduce Ms. Cindy Schrader. No? Oh, now it's on. I hate microphones. So bear with me because I'm one of those that kind of talk with my hands. I'm sure I will hit this. I will be a mess with it, but I will try to use it properly. Thank you for letting me be here tonight. Um, I speak to a lot of groups, and I I'm the executive director of an organization called I Know Better. And if you can't figure out those letters, it's not a nobiter. That's how you might text I Know Better. Um, and we are simply about keeping kids safe online. That is our entire purpose in life, is to keep kids safe. And hopefully to help you parents keep your kids safe. So, without further ado... Oops, that didn't work. No, this is going to be tricky. Back one. Well, we tried it. There we go. Okay. It's not. There you go. This is the world your children live in. It's where they were born. It's where they grew up. And it's the world they navigate. You and I, not so much. We have to learn this stuff. We have to read the directions. We have to the other.
Wednesday night, and my four-year-old godson picked up my telephone, and I said, what are you doing? And he says, I'm going to play games. I said, oh, honey, and Cindy's phone doesn't have games on it. Ten seconds later, he's like, yes, it does. Four years old, he figured it out. No instructions, no nothing. I didn't know it existed. Our kids, you guys out there, live in this world. You get it. And sometimes we adults don't get it. So you have to help us. You have to help us figure that out. And to do that, there's one thing. And unfortunately, part of my presentation has already been given, but it always bears repeating. When you come to nights like this, sometimes parents will tell me, I thought I was going to have to take a class. I thought you were going to tell me to go buy some kind of software. But truly, you don't need to take a class. You don't need to go buy software. You need to communicate. And that's and it will be seen because this is the strongest tool you have to keeping your kids safe online. It's all about communication. And you might say, you know what? I'd rather buy the software because my kids are not going to talk to me about Internet safety. Are you guys going to talk about Internet safety? I'm looking around at some of you kids. Do you? Do you talk already? Good job. Way to go. Sometimes it's hard. So I'm going to give you some ideas about things you should say to your kids or things you might bring up in the way to talk to them. And I say... Our kids, who they really, oh, this is not liking me at all, are your kids who they really mean to be online. And you might notice I've got the word mean in all capitals because unfortunately a lot of people are mean online. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But unfortunately, too, we're blurring the lines between the And sometimes we forget that who we appear to be online is who people are going to think we are. We think, I can have this one persona or this one reputation when I'm at school, but online, whatever you do online is what people are going to think about you. They're, it's what people are going to assume you are, and we have to protect that. So I have the first thing I would suggest you do. I usually do this with younger kids, but really this is something that all of us can do. Go home tonight, take a piece of paper out, and write down, who do you want people to think you are? Funny, athletic, great at video games, um, a good friend, happy. I trust that when you go home and do this, nobody's going to write down mean, Selfish, crap. So hopefully you're going to write down tonight are the words that you want people to know are the real you. And then sort of commit those words to memory. And every time you send a text, every time you post a picture, every time you forward a joke, think about whether those things support that list of people, of traits, of things you want people to think you are. So ask yourself these simple questions. What do your words say? I have a friend whose son is a great kid. He's a freshman in college. She calls me one day, and she's like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. She says, I think Nick's going to commit suicide. I'm like, oh, come on. That's not Nick. What, what, what could possibly make you think that? She said, I'm looking at his Facebook page, and he's got these words that are all about death and suicide and whatever. I said, well, read them to me. Tell me what he said. She reads them to me, and I said, Robin, read them again. She reads them again. I go, Robin, it's song lyrics. So many of our kids, and you guys help me, am I right? So many of you put song lyrics on your social networking sites, quote them, right? I'm seeing a couple of smiles back there. We need to remember that when we put those kinds of things online, other people, i.e. our parents, our grandparents, whatever, may not understand the words we use. What do your pictures say? And we're going to talk a little more about that in a minute. But the pictures you choose to share sometimes tell a different story than what you want people to know about you. What about your choice of friends? I had a young lady tell me one day, oh, I don't know any of my friends. I'm going to be Facebook famous. I have, have 5,000 friends. 
At the time, you couldn't have 5,000 friends on Facebook, and I kind of question the use of the word friends. But we forget sometimes that other people are looking at the friends we choose to be. And so is everyone who they say they are online. I'm going to see if this works. Maybe. Once you post your image online, you can't take it back. Friends? Anyone? Remember, think before you post. And that's nothing to say bad about anybody that works in the building, <laughs> so don't pay any attention to that. We forget sometimes that anyone can see things we post online. There are lots of things you're going to talk about later about security and privacy settings and those kinds of things, but anybody, if they try hard enough, can see what you post online. And I've had kids tell me, oh, you know, I put up a picture and, and the next day I took it down. I knew it was probably not appropriate, so I made sure I took it down. It's like, do you think anybody copied it while it was online or forwarded it? And those things live on on the Internet and literally can live on the Internet forever, even though you pictures is really important. This is not liking my thing. Here's a young lady. Many of you know Miley Cyrus. Well, I don't know if you know her, but you know of Miley Cyrus. Same girl, same picture. I mean, same year. Way different message. Right? We need to think about just because a picture seems cute or just because an, a star would share that picture, that's not necessarily how we want to protect, protect ourselves. Or how about these pictures? The young man in the middle, maybe just trying to be tough, maybe trying to be cool. I'm pretty sure Six Flags would not be approving of that picture. Or the two kids in the two bottom corners, maybe just clowning around, but obviously pulled from websites that I could get to. I don't know any of those kids. So the pictures we choose to put on our websites, on things that we share with other people, can tell a completely different story about who we are. And who might be looking at those pictures? Your friends is who we all think. We sort of get this tunnel vision that no one's looking at our pictures but our friends. We get sort of locked into, oh, I'm going to put this online because everybody will think it's fun. And we forget that, okay, I'm going to ask for some hands. Anybody ever have a friend you're not a friend with anymore? Mm-hmm. And maybe they're looking at your pictures, right? And maybe they're just friends of friends that you don't know. They're looking at your pictures, and they're strangers to you. And more often than not, now, slurs and principals are looking at your pictures. And some of you are too young to think about this right now, but in the future, you're going to want to get a job, and you're going to go to college, and you're going to want to get a scholarship, make good grades, all that kind of good stuff. Well, now counselors in colleges, scholarship committees, and all of those kinds of people are now looking at social networking sites to determine whether or not they're going to hire someone, give a scholarship, 
what have you. A quick story, young lady, graduated from high school, great soccer player, great soccer player, got a four-year ride to a prestigious college. In that summer, her new college coach called her old high school coach and said, you need to tell her before she gets to campus, she needs to clean up her Facebook page. The coach said, why are you calling me? She, he says, because if I can get a send the order for the scholarship. Trying to be a good guy. High school coach calls her, says, call me, we need to chat. She calls her back and she says, here's the scoop. When you get to campus, you're going to have to sign a code of conduct because that's a big thing right now. Almost all scholarships, fraternities, sororities, jobs, are making you sign an internet code of conduct now. And she says, when you get there, you're going to be kicked off the team because of what you have on your Facebook page. I don't want to know what it is. I'm just telling you this is what's come down from your new coach. The girl said, it's my private life. I will do what I want. And she lost a four-year ride to a prestigious college. For you kids that aren't thinking about college just yet, four years of college is something mom and dad are going to pay for. You don't want to lose any scholarship. She thought she got to choose what pictures she wanted to put on there. Another one is, is we need to worry about other people taking our pictures and sharing them because pictures can stay on forever. They can be forwarded. They can be altered. They can be changed. And even they can be changed a little bit where you may not want them. Do I have any Dancing with the Stars fans in here? Do you remember um, the president, former Gov Governor Palin, being on Dancing with the Stars? I don't think so. So remember that when you put things online or you share things, that somebody might decide to take it and change it. And those are some of the things that lead up to one of the things I want to talk about tonight, which is a biggie online right now, and that's cyberbullying. Depending on what um, who you listen to, you can hear numbers like one in three kids have been cyberbullied, or two out of ten, or 50 percent, or 70 percent, or you can, the, the numbers are all over the board because some kids don't tell, some, some kids, the surveys are older, whatever. This is a pretty reliable survey, and it said that 42% of kids have been bullied online. That means sitting here looking around the room, over half of you, or almost half of you, have been bullied. 35% have been threatened. So not just bullied, but actually threatened online. It goes on to say 58% have said hurtful thing, have had hurtful things said to them, and then another 53% admitted they said hurtful things. The biggest number, though, at the bottom is 58% of those kids never told a parent. And that gets back to that whole communications thing, that whole thing about talking a lot about cyberbullying. We always talked about the victim. And actually, there's the victim and the bully, but there's a third person involved. Does anybody know who that third person is? Yes. Perfect. The bystander. So we have a victim and we have a bully, and then there's the rest of us, just kind of watching what's going on. And if we don't stand up for the victim, we're a bully. If we laugh at something somebody said or did and then pass it on, we're a bully. And it's not okay. I'm going to try to show you a video. Okay, Lindsay, you're up. Today I'm going to talk about Patty. Patty's best characteristic, she's stupid, stupid and ugly. Everything she does is ugly. Watch her eat. Watch her stuff her face. Look at her. Greasy hair, dirty fingernails. It makes me want to vomit. 
Her dad doesn't work, they have no money. And that's why she wears that nasty pink sweater. Everyone hates her, even the teachers, and they're supposed to like everyone. Get a life, Patty. Thank you. I used this video with some third graders one day, and I said afterwards, I said, so who wanted to be Patty? And one little girl raised her hand. I said, you wanted to be Patty? You wanted to be picked on? She says, yeah, because I would have stood up and told them. And I'm oh, okay, calm down, calm down, calm down. And then we're going to back. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. We all know what cyberbullying is. We hear it every day. We know what happens. These are just some of the things, talking about other people, telling lies, spreading rumors, sharing gossip. Most importantly, sharing information that's not yours to share. Um, and we adults don't always do the right thing either. A dear, dear friend of mine was very, very ill. In fact, went on to pass away. And I was very concerned, and I thought, there are so many of our friends on Facebook. I'm going to get on Facebook, and I'm going to say, okay, everybody needs to be praying for Steve. He's really going through a tough time. And a friend of mine um, called me, and she said, Cindy, do you really think it's your place to share Steve's medical woes? Maybe his bosses don't know how sick he is. And I was like, wow. I talk about this every day, about not sharing other people's information. And I thought I was doing the right thing. I didn't think I was doing something, but we do. We don't necessarily think what we're doing is bad, but we don't stop and think. It's so easy to hit that send button. And so it's important that we remember when we do things online, we need to think about who it could hurt, who it could affect, and is it our place to say or do those kinds of things? So I ask, why do kids do it? It's not like bullying is something new, but why do kids cyber bully? And I want you to know that all of these answers came from kids. I have gotten these from various times that I've talked to kids. Does everybody see those? Do you agree that those are the reasons the people you know cyber bully? I want to hear from some of those kids. Do these look reasonable? Yeah. Do you see anything that's missing? There's one more big thing. The biggest reason people bully other people. Does anybody know? Sure. They're angry at him. Is a, it's, it's a great answer. Anybody else? It's, it's part of their personality. Pardon? Exactly. They are insecure. There is something wrong with them. Not wrong, and maybe, maybe that's a, a pushy word, but they are insecure. And so sometimes by talking about other people, they think they feel better. But it's easy to do online. When I was young, if you were a bully, you usually were big and tall, and you beat up somebody on the playground. Well, online, you don't have to be big and tall. You just have to have a computer. And most kids think they can't get caught. I show this one video, and I've stopped using it. It's a great bu bullying video. And every time I show it to kids, they, like, wait till the end, and they go, how did the cop know who was guilty? They didn't care about the poor kid that got bullied. They just wanted to know, how did the cop know? Okay, so the cops can find you. You are not anonymous online. So we need to remember that. We need to remember that. Bullying is not okay. Now, as parents, I say to you, we need to model better behavior for our kids. I'm going to try. In our own state, right here in Missouri, right now the political ads are playing. These are both good people. But I hear these ads and I think, I don't want to vote for either one of them because the ads are horrific. They're mean, they're undermined, they're dirty. And then I think, this is what we're letting our kids see. This is what they hear every day, is that it's okay to talk bad about other people. Or we let them watch TV shows. Eric. 
Jersey Shore, I'm seeing some giggling here, where it's okay to pick the loser out and pick on him, right? Or if we don't even like somebody, then we also might share the down and dirty parts of their lives, and we think it's okay to put it on TV. Now, I'm not standing here taking on the media because I would lose. But what I'm saying is, use these moments as teachable moments with your kids. Take these moments and say to your child, what do you think about this? How would you feel if you were that person or that person's child or whatever? So use these kinds of things as teachable moments, as things you can talk about. I'm going to buzz through these quickly because I'm talking too much. But here are signs that your child is being cyberbullied. Things to think about. Do they suddenly not want to use the computer anymore? Do they seem anxious or nervous or anything? Does that bring about anxiety? Have they stopped being interested in some of their school stuff? Do they not want to take part in activities? Do they kind of pull away from their friends or their family? All of these kinds of things are warning signs that something's going on. Now, it could be a lot of things, but cyberbullying is one of the things that it could be. And as importantly, it's important to remember signs that your child is a bully. If 43 or 42% of our kids are being bullied, somebody's doing that bullying. I talked to a mother last week, and she said, my son's being bullied by a girl in his class. We've talked to the parents, and now they've said, my daughter wouldn't do that. And she's now escalated because he told. What do we do now? And I don't see the school resource officer, but my immediate answer was, get to the school resource Talk to the school. Take it a step further. Nobody needs to be a victim. But if your child is a bully, obviously that's something else you need to take into consideration. Watch for the signs. Does he quickly change the screen when you walk in the room? Is he laughing, staying up late, getting on the computer and laughing hysterically at things he's doing? Okay, one of two things. He may be picking on somebody or watching YouTube. So pay attention to those kinds of things. Watch for those kinds of signs. Now, we talked earlier about communication. Well, do you think your kids would tell you if they had been cyberbullied? Maybe or maybe not. And here's some reasons why. They're embarrassed. Think about it. Kids, help me if I'm wrong. Do you really want to come home and go, Mom, everybody at school thinks I'm a jerk? Mm, maybe not. Maybe not really comfortable thing to come home and say. Or, Mom, people are picking on me, and I don't know what to do about it. But I'll say to you guys, you are there for you. And they're not going to think you're a jerk. They're going to take your side. They're going to be there for you. So we need to encourage our children to talk. Now, sometimes they're worried that you're going to go, see, I told you to stay off that computer. Right? I'm seeing some giggling here. That's the thing we need to be careful of, is we need to remember that by using that kind of tactic, it's going to discourage them from telling us what's going on. So they're afraid of losing their privileges. Maybe they started it, and they don't want to admit to you that they did something wrong. So there's lots of reasons. So we need to create an atmosphere where our kids know that it's okay to come and tell you. And if it does happen, then here are some quick things. Number one, tell a trusted adult. And if you're feeling weird about that being mom or dad, talk to your teacher, talk to your counselor, talk to your school resource officer. I have seven more than I want to know sometimes. But they know it's safe. They know that I'm an adult they can trust. If you cannot read the messages, that would be good. We're always tempted to read them anyway, but they're just going to hurt. So try to avoid them, and then definitely don't respond. If you call me a name, and I get all flustered and upset and whatever, you got to me. But if I just look the other way, which is hard, I know, but if I look the other way and ignore you, You've lost all your power as a bully. So don't respond to these folks. Don't let them win. Okay? Tell someone at school if it's school-related. 
Again, we talked about the counselors, the teachers, the school resource officer, and then don't erase the messages because they are proof that you didn't just make this up. It's not a story you're telling. And for parents, protect your children. Don't let them try to go handle it on their own. Somebody. And if the bully uses text or I am or anything like that, you can block them. And if physical harm is threatened, pull out all the stops and call the police. We've had to do this quickly. Detective Mize is going to be up here shortly. I wanted to share some quick tips that we didn't have time. Don't share your passwords. I can't tell you how many kids have gotten in trouble by sharing their passwords, and then you're no longer friends, and then people have access to all of your accounts. Don't trust people you don't know. Even a person online who plays the same game you do, is on Facebook with you, whatever, if you don't know them in real life, they're still strangers. Don't share your personal information. Think about what your words say. Don't confuse the virtual world for the real world. It's two different places. And if someone or something makes you feel uncomfortable, tell an adult. One quick video. So you worry how media might affect your children. Very interesting. Please know. TV, movies, music, internet, video games, smartphones, they're literally everywhere. I'm with a patient. Sorry. <clears throat> and although media has a lot of great things to offer kids, it does come with some side effects. Did you know the average child watches 100,000 violent acts and 8,000 murders on TV before they finish elementary school? Or that kids spend seven and a half hours a day with media, 10 months multitasking? Or that kids who multitask while doing schoolwork don't retain their knowledge and become disorganized and see their grades drop? How does that make you feel? Here. I advise you to watch, play, listen, and surf more with your kids. Talk about what they see and hear. Let them know how you feel about solving problems with violence. Establish appropriate time limits for how long your kids interact with media. And finally, you need to use it. No, you're not crazy. You're just living in a crazy time. CommonSense.org is a great site, and we mention it on some of our stuff. I want to thank you again for all you've had, you for being here, for all you've already done. Um, you kids that got drug here tonight, I have a present for you later, so see me on the way out. Okay, and there's my information. If you have any desire to call, talk, email, whatever, I'd be glad to talk to you. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much, Cindy. If you have any questions for Cindy, her contact information is up on the screen. She'll also be available with uh, Mr. Mize and our Director of Discipline, um, Coordinator of Discipline, Michael Barilak, after um, the speakers up here if you do have questions for those individuals. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Brian Mize, Special Federal Officer with the FBI, St. Louis Cyber Tech Online. All right, I walk. Oh, thank you. I walk around a lot, so I'm going to use this one. Um, oh, I need the clicker. That may or may not work. It's always embarrassing when the computer ke people can't work their computers, but it works. All right, um, quick picture there. A lot of what I do is child exploitation online. Um, a lot of that affects me greatly. I have two children of my own. There's another one here somewhere. There we go. Uh, we missed one, but that's okay. I'm not all work. I have two kids of my own, three and seven. That is, wow, these are great. Somewhere in there, there's actually a picture in between the two. Look, I like seeing that lady a lot, though. All right, it's not going to show. Uh, with my Macintosh computer, I take little pictures with my daughters. They love it, and um, and I put them in the presentation. They think they're they're big stars. If they, all right. All right, um, technically I am a detective with the Chesterfield Police Department. However, if you call there, which someone did recently, they had no idea who I was. Um, I've been gone for about five years to attach to a special unit. It is the RSEG unit, the Regional Computer Crime Education and Enforcement Group, which is made up of FBI, Secret Service, uh, multiple police departments from throughout the region, St. Charles County Sheriff's Department, Franklin County, 
and our sole purpose is to fight computer crime. Tonight, my job is a little bit to scare the parents a little bit, to scare the kids a little bit. It's close to Halloween. Um, it's a little different kind of scared, though. I hope that I scare you into, number one, communicating. Number two, learning what your kids are doing. The biggest question is, well, how does that happen? Parents will call me and say, well, how does this, this chat thing work? And I would say, well, you find out. It might sound simple with you online, right? Find some screen names and chat. Find out how one kid chats with another, where the chats are saved. Google it. Google's your friend. It works for everything. So I'll scare you a little bit. Um, technically, my, my title with the, which sounds weird with the FBI, Special Deputy U.S. Marshal. I am deputized federally because uh, computer crimes rarely happen in the city where you have a victim and a suspect in the same place, right? So I may need to travel, travel to other cities, other counties, other states, other parts of the United States, which I do regularly. Um, my job mostly is not to handle cyberbullying issues or issues with, um, with kids and schools and, and coordinate all that. I track criminals who victimize kids online. So we'll talk about that. There's the picture. Woo. Now you don't have to lie. There it is. It's a little dark. All right. If you're a fan of the Our task force mostly provides forensic examination services. That means law enforcement agencies bring us computers, they bring us iPads, they bring us phones. We get the evidence off of there for a case and we give it back. I do the computer forensics for Megan Meyer. Did anybody hear of that case? I testified in LA on Megan Meyer case. Sort of one of the big cases that really brought cyberbullying to the forefront, put it in the news, and now you hear about it almost every day. Um, we have a large number of examiners who do this, and we still can't keep up. Um, we do online undercover. Anybody watch Dateline? Right, that's good stuff. Um, however, what you might be saddened to know is most of the cases on Dateline were dropped. They went away. Um, they used some tactics that weren't exactly is acceptable in court. One time they used Miss America or Miss Teen America or something to do some of the chatting, and then she didn't want to testify. And so they did some things for TV that maybe weren't the best. We do that as well. Um, what's even more successful? I'm going to hear LimeWire, kids. LimeWire might be a little bit young. Anybody download illegal music on LimeWire? He was he was raising his hand for a second. I always catch somebody. Um, LimeWire is this great program that allows you to download things from other people, right? Well, a lot of that is maybe not legal. I don't know any like really good use for LimeWire other than like getting movies that are not in the theaters yet and getting music without paying for it. But also people trade pictures of kids online, exploited pictures, things like that. We go out and track those people down. And one day in Missouri, we identified 40,000 computers that were sharing illegal pictures. One day, 40,000. So um, we don't have the resources to track those down, but we do it one at a time. And we handle um, re referrals from police departments. Here's some of the, uh, the departments that are, that are with us and help us. I'm gonna go through a little bit quickly just because uh, we started late. We're a little low on time. We are the nerds. I'm okay with that. What that means is I get a new, uh, um, I have an Xbox 360 in my office, right? Um, I have some really cool things. Anybody play Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3? Might make your life a little less happy after you leave here today. I'm sorry in advance. All right. Um, we are partnered with the FBI Cyber Unit. I give them a little plug because they're great to us. Uh, great resources. They take care of us with cars and equipment and the, my little Blackberry that never shuts off. All right. Um, so online files. Switch to the next one if you can. Thank you. That's a better one, right? But kids younger and younger are getting into online gaming. I'm going to talk about how the profiles on things like Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 relate to MySpace type profiles and how that relates to online safety. I can click my slides. I just like that one. Kind of a picture guy. All right. So we have these social networking sites, and um, Cindy talked about them. Things like uh, MySpace, Facebook, 
Bebo was really big, my yearbook. They're all great. They're means for kids to express themselves, right? Uh, they, they call them teens and tweens. They socialize. Uh, I had a parent who called me when I was still at Chesterfield and said, I'm really having a problem with my daughter on Facebook. What should I do? And I said, have her delete her uh, profile. Uh, that. Um, that's social suicide is what she told me. That's the way they communicate. And I guess I didn't quite understand it at the time. Um, right? We don't even much anymore. When we were kids, we had a that's as far as we could get from our parents. And then it was really cool. My parents got a 12-foot phone line. And I could get to the bathroom and almost close the door so I could talk. Right? Now kids can go for a walk. They can take the dog for a walk. They can take the trash out. They can go to that little cell phone and they can talk. What does that allow? It's great for communication. Parents sort of uh, ask me all the time, what should I do? I'm really scared if they go out and they don't have a phone and they can't call me. Well, you know what? There aren't any pay phones anymore anywhere, so I don't disagree, right? But you can get the three button phones. They can call in and, and, and grandma or something, right? <clears throat> I think that's good enough at, up to a certain age. But um, this is the means of communication for kids now. They express themselves this way. They feel very personal about their site. Uh, so taking it down is just not, not an option. And it is the primary means of communication. And we can see a because they're they're complete. Uh, uh, we can see, you know, kids put a lot of things on here up there in the top left corner. That's the main image. Now, if that image is a picture of you in your cheerleading outfit or your basketball outfit, even people who are not your friends can see that picture. So if they want to know who you are, they can Google your school. It usually tells the city and state where you live, and they found you. It's really easy. It's fun. I have a, a Facebook, and um, the only messages I get are, why don't you have any pictures on Facebook? Facebook keeps telling me to tell you to put pictures up. It actually sends messages to your friends. Um, so pretty crazy. You can see the friends images on here. That is only their avatar picture. So what you put up there is going to be what's displayed for everyone, of whether they're your friend or not. So keep that in mind. We're going to look at how offenders use Facebook. We use Facebook to represent what we want people to think about us, right? Um, I always use the hotel sign when you're driving down the road and you see a hotel that says like clean rooms and HBO, right? Might not be the best hotel, but they're not going to put up there that, you know, we have stained bed sheets and our pillows aren't that comfortable, right? And, and there's, door, there's, there's air that comes in around the door because they don't exactly fit right. We're going to put the best things about ourselves up there. So this is Danny. He has a, uh, a little site here. This is his real site. He looks okay, right? He's got the sunglasses on. He's got that little thing. Doesn't make me like him that much at the start, but other people might. Uh, he's 25 years old. He likes poetry, plants, flowers, and the perfect night would be cuddling by the fireplace watching a movie. It's good stuff, right? Um, I thought of calling him when I first saw it. Uh, he's got another little site here. Ooh. Everyone is excited about that. So we look at Danny, and he has this persona now, right? We don't know anything else about him. We've never met him. We've never talked to him, but we've looked at his advertisement. Oddly enough, Danny did not link to his other site. He has another website. <coughs> Maybe. Um, he's on the Arizona Sex Offender Registry, and he was when this other site was up. He got violated for it. His other site isn't as popular um, he doesn't spread it around or show people. Um, in his MySpace, he never mentioned that he's a high-risk um, offender, right? So what has he done? He has advertised the good things about himself. Kind of makes you want to talk to him, some people, not me. Um, make you want to talk to him. He was violated for having the website up. This was when uh, the attorney generals were going after some of the offenders for um, having MySpace pages up. So offenders use websites to make themselves with what would be popular with. What's the hardest thing for an offender of this age to do? By the way, he's 32, not 25. Everybody lies about that. Um, I'm 24. And <coughs> the hardest thing for an offender to do is find something in common with you all. 
right? I love kids, have kids of my own. Sometimes I don't know what to talk to them about. That's, it's just the way it is. But if you have something like, I like volleyball, you like volleyball. We have something to talk about now. Um, I like gaming, you like gaming. Now we really have something to talk about. Uh, there's a few things they circled, he is 32. All right, so online gaming, right? We see these profiles on MySpace and people advertise about themselves. We have heard of offenders and we have interviewed offenders who change their website if they find someone they um, would like to victimize and they'll change their and So what they want to do is make you think that they like the things that you like. And then they talk to you about them. Well, it's something Cindy touched on, by the way. Um, my wife hates online gaming. She makes fun of me because I look like the operator at the, on the, um, like a phone operator with that thing on my head. I do play occasionally, like every night. Um, so, so Cindy touched on this a little bit, and that is, um, lost my train of thought there. I'm trying to move on. All right. So we have these online gaming systems, things like Wii, right? Wii's pretty safe for the most part. It is hooked up to the internet. You can browse the internet on there. You can do things like uh, create me. We have a PlayStation 3, right? Kind of a step up in terms of social gaming. You have a headset. You can talk to other people. You have a profile online. Then we have the Xbox 360, the best of the gaming systems, by the way. Uh, you can leave text messages. You can leave voice messages. You can send pictures. There's a good use for that, but I have no idea what it is. So if anybody knows the good use for sending pictures on the Xbox, let me know. All right. World of Warcraft. That was a big one. Still is big. Huge. Best-selling game online ever. Also allows for voice. It allows for, um, for text chat. You develop relationships with people over time. My wife, once again, makes fun of me, and that is... I have a few Xbox friends, right? I have people on the Xbox that I've played with for years that have no idea who I am. Some of them uh, probably do horrible bad things, uh, commit all kinds of crimes, and if they knew I was law enforcement, would never be friends with me. But on the Xbox, we're friends, right? So I would imagine people in here who play Xbox have people who are their friends. This is what I was going to say earlier. Right? They are my Xbox friend. So when parents ask their kids, well, tell me who this is, and they say, oh, that's just one of my friends, we need to know their definition of their friend. Is it someone that they've seen, that they know, that they've played with at school, or is it someone online that has befriended them? And we really don't know who they are. Some people call that World of War crack um, because it's so addictive. I've never, never played it. There's a few screenshots, and you can see at the bottom, there's uh, some chat, right? Sometimes it doesn't make sense. No need to read it. Uh -huh. There's another one, little screenshot there. Some people don't think this is fun. I see people going, why would anyone do that? I don't know. But you can see that it allows you to chat. And here's a, here's a little chat. Um, so you're really a girl. Anytime you're on Xbox and girls pay attention to this and they hear a girl's voice, um, there's something weird. I don't know what, oh my gosh, it's a girl. And everybody wants to talk to you, right? You'll get all these friend requests. Because, I don't know, gamers and, and girls, I don't know what it is, but be careful on there. So we see here, oh, are you really a girl? Yes, I am. If you don't mind me asking, how old are you? Oh, I'm 14. Oh, that's good. Do you like to talk to older people? Yeah, I'm 18. Good. Um, you have MSN? No. What about uh, MySpace? Yeah, I have a MySpace. That's good. Uh, and then at the end, he says, oh, by the way, I'm Chris Hansen. You're on Dateline to Catch a Predator. Right? Um, had this been sort of a real chat, this is the first part of the process of getting to know kids. How old are you? Hey, I'm 18. Is it okay if we still talk? We call it the first step in the grooming process. Um, we let the kids, the bad guys, let the kids sometimes make the choices about whether they want to continue to talk or not. Something psychological in the kids, there's some break computer
with a computer screen in front of you and talking in person. Had the same offender walk up to a kid at the mall and said, hey, how are you? How old are you? Kids would run away screaming, right, and tell someone. But we have this computer screen in front of us, and there's a weird disconnect between that. So kids, understand that when you're chatting with someone online, they are a stranger, right? Unless they are someone that you know at school, they're a stranger. Last night, and this is a true story, my BlackBerry tends to go off a lot. Um, you know, I'll play with my kids, and someone sends me a message. It's usually work. And I got a message last night, and it was, hey. I sent one back that said, hey, who is this? And after a while, we went back and forth. He kept asking me, well, who are you? I said, well, you sent me a message. Who did you send a message to? And he kept saying, well, I sent it to this guy, Ryan, whoever. And in the end, I found out it was my 14-year-old neighbor kid who um, had gotten his dad's phone and was trying to text message someone and hit the wrong button and was text messaging me. And before I would tell him who I was. And then, um, so it's important even for adults and, and your kids should learn this from you, that revealing your identity um, only leads to bad things. If you say who you are, they can look you up very quickly. Uh, there's a new thing on MySpace, I think it's MySpace or Facebook, that tells the last location you logged in from, and then you can click on it, and it'll take you to a map, and it'll actually show you on the map where that person was at when they last logged into their, to their Facebook. Amazing technology, right? That's great stuff. But if you're a kid, now they know where you were. Uh, I, I learned of it when a military base alerted all their people that, hey, if you're chatting online, they're going to know they're, you're at the military base. All right. So online gaming systems allow things like access to voice, uh, text, answering machine, photos, video. There is a common ground between the kids and the people they chat with, and that is online like uh, to play with kids, and I hang around with them long enough, I'm going to learn their interests. And sorry, I kind of, uh, I rarely present the kids, so I'm editing what I say as I go, doing my best, okay? Um, so if I have befriended you, and I'm playing a new game, Halo Reach just came out. Anybody heard of that? A few kids? Good stuff, right? But the kids that I play with don't have Halo Reach. What can I do? I could buy them the game and just send it to them. Give me your address. I'll send you the game. Happens all the time. Or if they buy a new game and they're on my friends list, I can see what game they're playing because they're on my friends list. I can see the last time they logged on. I can see how long they played and what game they played. What better way to track my friends online, okay? And for kids, parents think about this. They don't really want to talk to you that much. I mean, they do. You know, kids love us, and it's all great. But their favorite thing. But if they can find an adult that they can talk with, who is non-judgmental, right? Who's not going to get them in trouble, and they are always there. And this applies to computers as as well as gaming systems. If they are on my friends list, literally when they log on, a bell goes off, right? Bing. I know they're online. Great. I can talk to them. I can be there for them. What happened at school today? Wow, that's terrible. I would never let that happen, right? What did your parents do? Well, they yelled at you? That's horrible. I would never yell at you. Over time, this is a grooming process. This is a process of the grass is greener over here. Come my way. I deal with this every single day. Gaming systems allow it. Computers allow it. If they are on your friends list, you can tell when they're there and you can be there for them. So it's a little bit scary, I admit it. Um, all right, so let's get through some of this. The Wii is a little more family-based. It's good stuff. My kids play Wii. There's not a lot of internet. I'm not advertising one over another, by the way. I'm just going through them. Um, you can have a little avatar, these little Miis. They can grab their heads and they, they wiggle around and stuff. It's good stuff. My kids like it. Go to the next slide there for me. Here's a few uh, Miis. These are very personal, right? That's, uh, what's her name, anybody? That's the guy on, uh, yeah, good, go ahead. If I could click through these faster, I would. There's her, she said all kinds of problems, right? Angelina Jolie, recognize her. Chuck Norris, for us older people. Um, so we can see how people take their pictures, they personalize their avatars, it's important to them. They want them to look cool. They want them to look like they actually look. 
Kids do the same thing. There's uh, McLovin, right? Hopefully kids haven't seen that movie. We have a PlayStation 3. That's a lot like an Xbox 360. You have interactive play. You have voice training. Very important. I don't put them up here. You're going to learn about some of the controls um, down the hall. Uh, not on the uh, game stations, but on, on some of the computers. Learn about the parental controls on game stations, gaming uh, uh, platforms. Some of the accessories, these are great. A camera, wow. Now people that I don't know can see pictures of me. The chat, you can chat with people because you have a little text pad there. If you don't have a text pad, they'll put a little uh, uh, keyboard up on the screen and you can text with people up on the screen. Headsets, of course, you can talk. There's a lot of voice communication. Xbox 360, by far the most developed gaming system in terms of Facebook is on there now. MySpook, MySpace is on there. Uh, you can download movies. I think Twitter. Um, it's all set up to be a social interaction with other people. I have people that I play with that live in other countries. Definitely other states. Headsets, you've got the, the camera. All this stuff is great, makes a lot of money, right, for the, for the companies. Um, and then a few of the features that you may not be familiar with. You may have clicked too far there. Go back one if you can. All right. Um, you can leave messages, right? And if anybody has to leave, feel free. We started late. You're not going to offend me. Just walk out. This thing may offend me. Can we back up a little bit? See what happens. I'll stop pressing this. Okay, go one forward. Beautiful. I don't know why that's flashing. Go ahead, go one more. One more. Keep going. We're stuck in some kind of loop. All right. So we see that um, people have avatars, right? These are representations of themselves. This is what we want people to see us uh, as and what we want to look like. It may actually look like us. It may not. Go ahead. All right. We have a friend. Um, um, we can see, and the last one that kind of sped by, we can see who we're friends with, and we can see what game they're playing and last time they were online. We can leave messages for people. Um, someone wants to be my friend. We can see um, the messages. If we click on them, we can see the content, right? So this is a answering machine. It's a text machine. It is a picture machine. And oh, oh yeah, you can play some games, right? All a big community. Go ahead. Um, we can see a profile here. This is someone that I'm actually friends with. I don't know what he actually looks like. Here's the mystery profile of the day. Anybody guess who that is? All right, it's me. Um, so I look like that, don't I? So what I want you to get out of this is that, number one, computers aren't our only danger for kids. Right, and number two, people can be anybody they want online. They can they can send you gifts. By the way, you can uh, you can rent movies on the Xbox 360. I think PlayStation 2. What better way to give gifts to our friends online than to give them some Xbox points or Microsoft points, and then tell them which movies to download? They can introduce um, rated R movies, right? Because if you don't have the parental controls set up, you can download rated R movies. It's good stuff. Get in there, check the parental controls. A few more celebrities here. It's our president. He has a, uh, that's his Xbox uh, guy there. Sorry. Sorry, this is a bit maddening for me with this. Just go forward one. All right. Michael Jackson, in memory of. We have a few gift giving opportunities, which I talked about. Things like Microsoft Points. You can see a variety of movies on there at any one time. You can download them in just a few minutes and start watching. Parental controls are really important on all these systems as well as on the computer. Find out how these systems work, what you can do to make sure your kids are safe while they're on there. Uh, there's things like movie ratings. You can set it so only certain movies can be played. Really easy. Once again, if you have trouble, Google it. How do I block rated R movies on the Xbox? Google's our friend. Does the best stuff. I use it every day. Um, 
<laughs> I didn't tell my wife about this, but you can actually set up a timer. So, so the Xbox, she actually said that uh, one of the great things she'd like to invent is a uh, power supply with a timer on it. And when it shuts off, you can't turn it back on until the next day. Xbox thought of this before her, not that she knows that. And, um, and you can actually set up a time on how long they can be on, and when they're done, it shuts off. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> and you can set it up weekly even. You can give them 10 hours a week, and then if they use it all in one time, then they're done for the rest of the week. So good stuff. Uh, you can set up game ratings. This is big too. If you don't want your kids playing violent video games, some people don't, that's okay, then you just set it up on there so their friends can't bring their games over and pop them in the machine and play them. Happens all the time. All right, so gaming systems have evolved a bit from Atari. That was my first gaming system right there, I promise. Kids, if you don't know what that is. All right, so what are the solutions? I've scared you a bit, uh, given you a bit to think about, and apply this same, and normally my presentation is much longer, so, so we can sort of talk about computers and then go into gaming systems, but um, what are the solutions for us as parents? What do we do? We educate ourselves, first of all. We must here. When we were kids, the choice is, do I read their diary, right, or do I not? Um, what I always say is if you suspect something is going on, you kind of have to take that step and do it and then maybe apologize later. I have so many parents who come to me after. I see the after effects. You know, I thought something may have been going on, but I didn't think it was right to read it. I didn't think it was right to monitor what they did on the computer. Okay, that's a personal choice. Um, so you have to make that parental ethical decision. Do I or do I not look? There are some monitoring programs. Uh, one called Spectra Pro, I think. You can install it on the computer. It's completely not viewable. No one knows it's on there except you until you put your password in. And you can read everything that's been done on the computer. You want to do it? I don't know. It's your choice. You want to put it on there and then not look at it unless you need it? That's your choice, too. You want to tell your kids that it's on there? You can do that as well. I have made death notifications. I have arrested people in front of them. Shocking things you can think of, but the most shocking thing, the most shock I've ever seen on a parent's face is where I showed them their kid's chats. And they're like, oh my gosh, my kid does not say that stuff. They do online. You'd be very, very surprised. Xbox, get on there and listen for five minutes on a Halo game. The language, unbelievable. The things they say to each other, terribly hurtful, right? Um, so you have to know what's going on. Some parents will let their kids play but they disconnect and shut off the sound. Disconnect the headset, shut off the sound. It's one option. And set up some rules. How long are you gonna be online? Who can you talk to? Where are you going to be when you're online? We ask the same questions when they go out, right? Let's say our 16-year-old kid, in my case, would be 32. When she gets to go out of the house, where are you going, who are you going with, and how long will you be gone? We don't ask that when they're on the computer but they're in contact with a lot with at the mall. I guarantee it. Go into a chat room, there are hundreds and hundreds of people, and they will hit you up for conversations. That doesn't happen so much at the mall. You don't have a lot of conversation. So keep that in mind. Communication, monitoring, and some rules. I talked about that, what sites can you visit? What are friends? Talk about that definitely. There are some monitoring software, so I already talked about it. Consider it, okay? I do have some uh, email addresses. Um, keep in mind that my FBI.gov email address um, makes a noise on my BlackBerry at any time of the day or night. I prefer if you have questions, you need something that I can help with, um, use my Chesterfield email address and uh, send me an email. I'll do what I can to answer it. If it's some kind of emergency or you just want to report something, you need to contact the local law enforcement wherever it happened. But one thing to keep in mind with law enforcement, we're doing our best to keep up. We're not always well educated about the technology as you are. A crime in person, it's not a crime online. Kids say mean things. It's very unfortunate. Does it fall under cyberbullying? Absolutely. Is it a crime for law enforcement to handle? Probably not. So keep that in mind. There is a free speech 
Amendment, right? And unfortunately, that allows me to say mean things about people, even if it's on my MySpace. It shouldn't happen, but sometimes law enforcement can't always be the, um, the person that intercedes. All right? If you have questions, we'll be up here. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're moving on to the next part of our evening. If you do have a question for Cindy Schroeder, Mr. Brian Mize, or uh, Mr. Michael Berlack, our coordinator of discipline for Parkway School District, they will be a question over something they've presented or something else that has come to mind. Feel free to stop by. If you don't have a question at this time, if you walk out this door here and take a right down the hallway, there are some signs guiding you.